discuss the uh, all or nothing contrast that characterizes uh, our ability to engage and endure in spiritual warfare. Jesus was pretty clear when he said in John chapter 15 verse 5 that without me you can do nothing. And we discussed that at length. And earlier he had said in John 6, 63, it's the spirit that quickeneth or makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. All of your righteousness, all of your ability, all of you, all of you without Christ adds up spiritually to a whole lot of nothing. Now, that should humble us, right? Well, there's a contrast. And the converse of that we see in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, that says we can do all things through Christ. And... and this needed a little uh, clarification. So, while it is, it is the promises of God don't mean that we can just do you know whatever we want in Christ. We looked into the scriptures and we see that we can do all things. So when God gives us the great commission to go teach people all things whatsoever I've commanded you, He says, "Hey, I'm with you. You'll be able to do that." We also saw in uh, this next text. Again, His divine power gives us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So, again, we, we saw that, and one of the things I just thought was amazing was we looked at um, this, this verse where the Apostle Paul, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, he said, I endure all things. The, again, the Apostle Paul is one of the heroes of the faith, and one of the reasons why we idolize him or we, we uh, look up to him was because of his spiritual toughness. He was an icon of spiritual toughness, and that's what we've been talking about. He went through a tremendous amount of persecution and, and horrific circumstances. He actually said, if after the manner of men, if, if for some man's cause I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, Paul got put in an arena to fight against wild animals for the cause of Christ. Amen. Which of you have done that? Well, we need to be thankful for the freedom that we have, amen? amen? I mean, we have to, what we have to deal with is nothing compared to what our brothers and sisters around the world are enduring for the faith, and what our brothers and sisters in the past have endured for the faith. We should be doing it better, amen? We've got nothing to complain about. So this morning, I want to draw your attention back to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. I'm going to put it up here, but I'd also encourage you to turn in your Bible. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, because we're going to prepare to move on to the next section of this study on Christian toughness. Now, for some of you, what we're talking about this morning is, is or this kind of transition between this subject and the next, is going to be review. But for those of you who haven't heard this before, or for those of us who are forgetful, and notice I did say us, um, uh, we're going to look at another example of this all things principle. Let's look at this verse. Where again, and we, we're going back to this, it said, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto, there we see that again, all things. Having a promise of the life that, is now, that now is, and of, the, of that which is to come. So, when we pursue godliness, we will profit in this life, and in the life to come. Profitable unto all things. Now again, we, we spoke about this earlier. A relationship with God does not make you bulletproof or give you the ability to leap tall buildings in a single bound. All right? We need to be very, very careful. It is true that the power of God is limited to those things that pertain unto life and godliness. And it it is true that the health and toughness that you build from that personal relationship with Christ will help you in virtually every facet of life. So see this contrast. Yes, it's true that becoming a Christian doesn't mean that you just kind of become elevated above life's problems and you'll never get stressed and you'll never struggle with sin and you get bulletproof. That's not true. Nor is it true that you, you know, that getting saved gives you this Holy Ghost of power and, and you start saying, I sense that someone out here has... So Look, it doesn't give you psychic powers. 
and please, my people, all right, you're my family, you're my responsibility, and I want the people that are my family, I want the people that are my responsibility to be able to recognize when charlatans and fakes start pulling this, well, I'll tell you, the Holy Ghost had told me that, and, and no, he didn't. We have God's Word, and God will use God's Word to speak to your heart and your conscience. But don't fall for this, you know, super spiritual saint. Uh, because I'm such a good Christian, I have this special insight, and, and I understand things. It's garbage, all right? Study God's Word, know, know what He wants you to do, and then sit back and watch the power He will give you to do it. Amen? Amen. That's the real power of God. And recognize the fakery for what it is. People want sugar. They don't want health. All right? Around here, we want to be healthy so we can get strong, so we can be tough and endure. Amen? I don't have time to be off my notes today, so I better get right back here. Yeah, we talk a lot about balance around here. And this verse... Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It, it, it's very popular with the, the name it, claim it crowd, right? You just name it and claim it. And, or the, um, you know, the, the prosperity gospel. And there's people with, with bigger degrees and more expensive suits than I and a better haircut. And they'll get up here and, and they'll tell you that God loves you and He wants you to be a millionaire and He wants you to drive a Rolls Royce. And, and if you really just followed God, then your life would be perfect. Is the, where does the Bible say that? Well, they'll go to Psalm 1 and they'll say, Blessed is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You know, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So in Jesus' name, just claim it and you'll get that raise. Just claim it and that stock that you bought will just go through the roof. Well, is that really what we see in Scripture? No. It's not what I see. Maybe um, you just need to see that the power of God is, uh, you know, all, you want all these things? Seek first the kingdom of God. That power is not for you to build your kingdom. It's for you to build God's kingdom. It, it again, it may or may not be God's sovereign will for you to enjoy perfect physical health, wealth, or success. It may or may not be. You need to read Hebrews 11, by the way. We're not going to go through it and read it today. This is your homework. Go home and read that chapter. Many faithful Christians in the Bible, and many faithful Christians since the Bible, have found that God gave them a cross to carry. Anybody in this room like that? Maybe that was a cross in the form of a physical ailment. Maybe it was the cross in, a, in the form of a, of a professional setback or, a, or an overwhelming challenge or a personal betrayal or even political persecution. But God always gives the peace and the joy and the power to endure, doesn't he? If you are carrying His cross, and if you are walking in His path, he, His grace will always be sufficient, will it not? Amen. Hey, some of you have experienced that, I can tell. Yes. Some of you need to experience that. Some of you need a brother or sister in Christ. Someone who's been there and done that to come alongside you and say, Listen, I know how hard that is. Believe me. Keep moving in the right direction. Don't let the devil get you, don't let the world, the flesh of the devil get you off track. Keep walking. You can do it. You can always do right because God's grace is sufficient. And beyond that, we need to learn to digest this verse. And what does it say? I will glory in my infirmities. Somebody tell me what are infirmities? Thanks. Yeah, ailments, things that get you down. I will glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. So when things get ugly, when things get out of control, when, when life puts more weight on you than you can carry, 
and you realize that, and, and some of you, please be with me on this, you know that moment, right? Where God allows more on you than you can carry. And then God says, move forward. And you look at Him like, really? Your prayer says, Lord, do you not know? And, and, and I'm playing God here, right? So God says, really? Did you just ask me that question? Do, do, do I know what you're dealing with? He knows. He put it on you so that you can experience what it feels like. To say, I can't do this. But you told me to do it. So feet, here I go. And the power and the glory and the, the enlightened experience you will have when you say, hey, wait a minute, my feet are still going. Hey, wait, I haven't fallen over. Hey, wait, I, I haven't broken. This is not me. Somebody needs to say a hallelujah up in this place. Amen. I've been there. I know what that's like. I know what that whole footprints in the sand thing when you're like, God, I can't go anymore. I'm broken. I'm done. This hurts too much. And God says, move forward. And you look down and your little feet are doing this, but you're not the one moving. That's the sweet spot in life. That's right. That's the stuff that's going to matter on the other side. What am I talking about here? Just getting up and going to work? No. I'm talking about when it's time for you to say the right thing, to do the right thing, to have that conversation. Or to make that call and say, that's not going to be in my life. And I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how it's going to turn out. But I know because of what I've studied. I know because of the godly counsel that I've gotten. I know because of the god godly people in my life. I know this is right. And so I'm going to go for it. Win, lose, or draw. And I will trust God. And when you do that you will see the true power of God. By the way, you won't really see the true power of God until you get put in that place. Because when you live life just in this nice little safe comfort zone where you've got it all under control, God will sit back and say, let me know when you need me. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't stop moving. Don't quit. <coughs> Matter of fact, go harder. You know? There does come a point where you say, oh, wait a minute, this ain't me. We can go faster. And again, that's when God says, we're going fast enough. Calm down. Do you have that kind of relationship with God? Amen. Do you want that kind of relationship with God? Amen. <laughs> if you do what God wants you to do, in virtually every facet of life, you will find yourself on the right side of this universal principle of reaping what you sow. So, a faithful Christian will study, pray, worship, seek godly counsel to know what God wants you to do in every facet of life. You'll put in that time. You'll put in that effort. And, if you're a good steward, you will reap that. And if, and pay attention here, I want you to get a good look at that. What did he do wrong? Nothing. Nothing. Looks like he's having a rough time. Yes? Yes. Did he, he's still carrying the cross. He didn't put it down. He didn't quit. He didn't do anything wrong, but he still carried the cross. You know, you and I are not Christ. And you and I need to pay attention to a difficult reality. See, sometimes we find ourselves struggling in life. Maybe it's a physical ailment. Maybe it's a relationship issue. A professional setback. A financial problem. 
maybe even political persecution, and we want to say, oh, I'm a Christian, and oh, I'm being persecuted, and oh, my goodness, life is so hard. And the reality is, you're doing wrong, and you're reaping the, the, the consequences of that. Oh, I've got this physical ailment. Well, are you doing what God has told you to do in the stewardship of your body? Well, no. <laughs> you're not carrying a cross. You're carrying a Twinkie and you're wondering why your energy levels are down. Oh, I've got this financial issue and I need you to pray for me. Listen, we'll pray for you, but how about we open up God's Word and start talking about what God's Word has to say about a budget? Living within your means. Oh, I need you to pray for me. Okay, I'll pray you get right with God. Oh, you don't know how bad things are with my husband. If you just knew him or if you just knew my wife, well, you know, having been a Christian counselor for a year or two, multiple times I've sat in the office and I've heard a, both the, the man and the woman say, oh my goodness, I just can't believe this. And, and I'm like, so lay it out, what actually happened? And then I'll look at the man or I'll look at the woman and I'll say, really, you said that and you did that and you're surprised that your spouse is unhappy? That, that's shocking. Sometimes we need a dose of reality. What? You just can't understand why your, your, your spouse doesn't worship you when you don't have a job and don't want a job and you're happy to sit at home while she makes it happen? And you just can't understand why she doesn't respect you. You're not carrying a cross. You know what I'm saying? Be careful. We'll, if you're not careful, if you, you get off track and you'll start thinking that the consequences of sin are you carrying a cross. That's called being a self-righteous, hypocritical, foolish, rebellious Christian. Again, don't get me wrong. There are times where God will allow circumstances into your life where you are stewarding your body exactly the way you should. You are absolutely within the range of right, and God will allow you to face a physical ailment. Carry the cross. There will be times where you are absolutely budgeting your money the way you should, and God will allow something to happen that will test you. There will be times where you are absolutely being a faithful spouse or a faithful parent, and that other person will choose to do wrong, and it will break your heart, and you'll have to carry it. There are times where you will be faithfully doing your job and your boss or some co-worker or whatever will do wrong. Carry the cross. Amen? Amen? Be right, do right. But don't get it twisted when you're the problem. By the way, when you're the problem, happy meal. It's a whole lot easier to fix yourself than fixing someone else. Amen? It's a whole lot easier to, for the light bulb to flip on because you actually have a Holy Spirit relationship. You read your Bible and say, hey, guess what? That's on me. I can fix that. Lord, forgive me. You, forgive me. And set up a plan and do right. That's a whole lot easier than getting your lost boss to do right. Sort yourself out. Pick the cross up and carry it. He did. Amen? Amen? Godliness may not make you a fitness or fashion model. But godliness will make you a faithful steward of your body. Godliness may not make you a business mogul or a billionaire. But godliness will make you wise and disciplined with your career and your finances. Godliness may not make you the most popular person in town, but godliness will turn you into a light that people can look to when they want to see what right looks like. When they want to see what right looks like. Hang on a second. We're going to uh, shift gears as we introduce this next... Relax. I'm not going to preach another... We're just introducing next week. All right? Look at you guys. Like, 
I got to tell you this, by the way. A couple of weeks ago, Kelly was running the PowerPoint, and I've had my PowerPoint just keep going and going and going. So there was probably a hundred slides, and Kelly was like, "Lord Jesus, I, I trust you." And I was only using about twenty of the slides. So let's shift gears and introduce what we're going to be talking about soon. In the movie Batman Begins, Bruce Wayne is uh, blindsided at a party by his enemy, who uh, who knocks, sets the house on fire and leaves him trapped under a very large beam. And so along comes Alfred, his uh, faithful friend and butler, who finds Bruce unconscious and trapped under the beam, and he's unable to move the beam, and so he rouses the Batman inside of him by saying, what is the point of doing all those push-ups if you can't just lift a stinking log? And the two of them move the beam, and they move on to safety. And so my question to kind of introduce is, what is the point? What is the point of all the, the physical discipline and, and mental discipline and intellectual toughness and, and emotional toughness and spiritual toughness? What's the point of all of this? Why do all that? The answer is in Matthew chapter 22, which we're going to use again next week. And it tells us that the point of, of Christian toughness is relationships. Relationships. That's what it is all about, loving God and loving others. The quality of your life is not based on your stuff. Luke chapter 12 says, Beware of covetousness. Man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. As a matter of fact, he went on to say, Love of money is the root of all evil, which, which some coveted after. They said, I'm going to have my money. They err from the faith and pierce them th some, themselves through with many sorrows. You want to know one of the reasons I don't get into the whole supercar, hypercar thing? As a matter of fact, I had this, this thing... I kind of have this ongoing thing in on my Facebook page where I'll see these awesome cars and I'll park Sally next to it and I'll take a picture of Sally in that car. So I found this Lamborghini, this beautiful yellow Lamborghini, and I took a picture of Sally in front of her and I said, when you remember you're not into high-maintenance chicks, and go off. Because owning a you were cost to change the tire of a Lamborghini? 50 grand. If I heard right, it's like $50,000 because you have to redo all of these different things and the wheels and the tires and all that. Insane. High maintenance. I won't tell you some of the other memes that I've put out there, but they're... You, know. you have a relationship. And when you want more than you should, when you want something that God tells you you shouldn't have, many sorrows. So... You can have a whole bunch of stuff. You can have the best stuff and be miserable. Be miserable. Some of you know that, but look out there. Look at Hollywood. You see this all the time. People who have the best of everything, they're miserable. Your life, the quality of your life is not determined by your stuff. The quality of your life is not determined by your status. Check this out. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Wherefore, let him that think he thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. You can be at the top of your game. You can be at the top of your game. You can be highly respected in your field. <coughs> And be miserable. Think about this just very plainly. You, you see this woman who dreams of this house. Beautiful, big mansion. And then she gets married and she has that house. And then the relationship deteriorates. And what happens? She can't wait to get out of that. I just can't live in this house. It's not about your stuff. You get that job. You have that status. And then you just can't stand your boss. Or you just can't work with this team and you're out the door. It comes back down to your relationship. So again, that's it. The quality of your life is based on the state of your relationships. 
And we're going to talk about a hierarchy of relationships. We're going to talk about some of these definitions. But at the end of the day, God just said it. Love Him, love others. It's, it all comes back down to relationships. And I'm going to throw this out there if you're going, all right, duh, yeah, but yeah, give me the stuff. There's a song out there right now that I, I heard and I, it just makes me want to ah, chew my tongue. Cold beer never broke my heart. There's a song out there. What is it? Long neck something beer never broke my heart. And a lot of guys go, yep. Need to rethink that. Well, my car never broke my heart, or my, my career never broke my heart. Give it time. Amen. Next week, we're going to jump into the importance of and the steps toward building healthy, strong, and tough relationships. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Ryan to pray. We get to baptize. Gentlemen, come on, do your thing. Ryan. Heavenly Father, again, it's awesome privilege to be here today. Ready to help us take these words.